Pentecost and the Pentecost proper nine. I tried to figure out how many Sundays of Pentecost, or how many Sundays of uh, COVID we've had, and I just lost count. It seems like a hundred years of it, but I think it's been since this spring. So we are glad you're here today as we gather for worship. If you're listening to us on Facebook Live or Zoom, we're happy to have you with us this morning also. We'll continue to change our service around just a little bit uh, in order to make everyone feel welcome. Let me remind you very quickly of announcements and we'll get on with our service today. Let me tell you that the church office will not be open this week. Uh, the reason for that is my reason. I'm trying to get hay up. And so I'll be in the hay field probably during that period of time. So we will not be open this week. If there's something that comes up, you can give me a call. Today, the session will meet at 1230. Uh, Susan Sharp Campbell will be the moderator. Houston is the clerk of the session. Uh, we'll be doing this by teleconference, uh, so uh, uh, that information, the members of the session, you have that number, uh, you may call in certainly by uh, Zoom uh, meeting. Also on the 15th of July, we're working on a vestment service in the park at 8 p.m. that evening. Uh, this is going to be an evening service, it's a Wednesday evening, and you'll be able to drive down into the park area around the gazebo, you don't have to get out of your car, you can roll your window down if you wish, or you can set a lawn chair out by your car. We're going to have uh, some prayers and some re uh, readings. Uh, the Reverend Stephen Baldwin is going to come up and share with us during that period. Uh, and we're going to sing a lot. We can sing out in the open like that. Uh, and we'll be dispersed around that area. So we're going to sing several songs. And this is the part we need from you right now. We need your favorite hymns to be sung. If you can give us a copy of some of those, we're going to sing as many of those as we can that evening as we're there waiting for the sun to go down uh, and enjoy a nice evening in the park. This is not... Uh, see if we can stump the piano player because I don't think you can stump Julie. She knows about all of them. But uh, this will be uh, songs we'll sing that we have in our book. So I'm going to try to, if you get in there ahead of time, I'm going to try to print those in a, in a uh, paper to handy so you won't have to have a bunch of books to handle and that type of thing. We are glad that you're here today as we gather to worship. As we prepare, I will tell you the services we change a little bit today. Uh, we are uh, going to be our liturgist today will be Jim Miller, and Jim is going to actually sing for us during the Curie and the Gloria Patre, and we can follow along in prayer during that period. And then Christian, she just can't get away from us putting her work. She's going to come and do our scripture reading and lessons today uh, after uh, Jim finishes with his song as they separate. So, so be aware of that as we go through the service. We're trying to make it um, open for all as you worship on Facebook and as you're here present. There is a place of quiet rest. Listen to enjoy it today as Julie plays. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, hold us who wait before thee near to the heart of God. Listen as she plays for us this day.
Merciful God, we fill our lives with comfort and convenience, distractions that consume our energy and time. We chase after wealth and power as if they could satisfy our hunger and our souls. But you beckon us toward a new life, a life made rich through Sabbath and service. Free us from the yokes that bind us and draw us near to you until we learn to walk with Christ. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you. 
value of God unto you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my work is easy and my burden is light. Keep these words in your heart. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Thanks be to your heart. Sunday before this hit. 
I like seeing those of you that are here, but I miss seeing those folks that can't get out who are compromised and can't get out in this, this situation. I miss meeting people at the door as you leave on Sunday mornings and joking with you and talking with you and asking how the garden is or how the, the, the uh, life is going. I miss those things. I guess you could say that we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. We are just tired at this point. In the beginning, this was kind of like, for most of us, something we've never been through, unless you lived through the Spanish flu at that, that pandemic, I don't think any of us did that. But in the beginning, we said, surely this will not last too long. We made plans as a church, let's get through the next few weeks, how will we operate, what will we do? It's kind of like in a snowstorm. You know, when there's a snowstorm, you call ahead and we cancel church because the streets are bad, the roads are bad, uh, the routes are bad. Uh, and we don't bring people out. And we know it's an inconvenience. But soon we know that the snow plows will run, the roads will open back up, and the power will come back on if the power's off, and life will be normal again. We will have forgotten the hardship of getting stuck at home in a snowstorm in a few weeks. In fact, we'll be fussing because uh, it's cold, or we're fussing because we had to get out at all. Uh, in fact, that snowstorm is usually not really a hardship. Uh, we can rest, maybe. You know, the things slow down a little bit. We'll put a pot of stew on the oven, or on the, on the burner, uh, biscuits in the oven, and we can rest a little, maybe. Now, though, it has just continued. We went by the snowstorm two weeks, and we've gone on and on and on. We hear so many conflicting directions and thoughts, what we must do and what we must be about. We already wear masks at church and places, and soon will be mandated that everybody will wear them as they go out. We stay at home as much as possible. The more cooped up we feel, the more closed in we feel, the more lack of normal we feel, sometimes the angrier we get. And our normal kind and calm facade that we place, and I say facade because we are all a bit mean sometimes, it turns testier and more critical as we go through this time. Don't you feel that when our surroundings and our world has been rocked, when we feel we've lost control of our decisions and our lives, don't you feel we react in different ways? Some become depressed, some feel helpless, others become angry and mean-spirited, and some become cynical and critical. Our life of what was really a life of ease, and we don't like to think it was ease, we had hardships, but now we say, boy, what was before was really easy. Now it becomes a time of challenge. People are angry in the streets and in the seats of government. And churches are not in a world they've ever been. It is a hard time. Some churches will never open back when this is done financially they cannot afford to. I want to tell you the truth this morning. I didn't bring it here to, to depress you because you were depressed enough, maybe. I want to tell you one you often forget or ignore. It was in this kind of upside-down world we're living right now, the kind of world that we have around us where Jesus came into existence. In, our world. in a manger, he came to live and to work and to serve. In our complete lecture lesson today in Matthew, if we were to go back and read the rest of that lesson, Jesus describes a generation that is never satisfied, generation that's hyper-critical, that is aggressively judgmental. They want things to go the way they want and people to react the way they expect according to their own personal preferences and standards. And when things don't pan out the way they want, they became angry and spiteful and discontent, contrary, perverse, impossible to please. They wanted the people around them to dance to the tune they played. To decide how others around them should behave or live is what they wanted. And sometimes they had no rhyme or reason to their attitudes. They are and were in Jesus' day many times if this world was a king. They wanted to disagree with everyone and everything, even in their places of worship. Jesus, in today's total lesson in Matthew, was full of personal grief, too, at this point. He had just learned that John the Baptist, his cousin, his friend, had been arrested and probably would be executed. He had just learned that maybe he would be next in the process. 
So Jesus is talking to people at this point, talking about the world. And Jesus is pointing out a very human reaction, one that is typical in times of stress, fear, loss of control, a culture of unrest. It's no mistake that the, he addresses a generation, and not a specific group of people here, because what he says applies to us too. He describes a situation. He's identifying with the cultural symptoms of his day of the storm and stress. And he knows that they will need to be ministered to, not with logic or rational behavior. They were not an easy people. But to dissatisfied, unhappy, frustrated people, angry people, depressed people, Jesus is describing in this passage, Krishna read, a conflicted and angry world and a passionate culture, just like we are, what they need. Jesus looked around them. He knew their difficulties and he knew their problems. He knew how difficult it was for them. And it's with hope and comfort and love he says to them these words. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn for it, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden. Jesus is inviting those around him at that time, in that culture, in that place, as he does us today, to rest, to seek reprieve from conflict and complaint. He says, take my yoke, it is easy. Now I have to tell you, I've never used a yoke in farm. We used to put a yoke on oxen and they would pull the load up with the yoke that was there. And what they found, I always thought of a yoke being something kind of overbearing. But what it's found when one ox pulls a load, it's a lot of work. But if you put two in a yoke and they work together and they pull the load easy. Jesus says to us, I'm offering you a yoke. We know a little bit about that term. We've had churches yoke together in the past, trying to do ministry together. Uh, those are kind of important things. He says, I'm offering you a yoke. He said, I'll take the lead and bear the brunt of everyone's frustration, everyone's anger, everyone's difficulty and struggle. And he says, I will give you rest from our internal conflict, and I will give you peace from our anger. A break from our never-ending frustration. A reprieve from our helplessness. Jesus offers to fight the fight with us. To give us back control over our lives by allowing us to glide in his powerful, safe, protective shelter. It doesn't mean we give up the fight. Too often we're willing to just lay down and say that's it. But Jesus asked us to trust him, to open to him, to let him guide us in our efforts so that we too can learn the art of working together. The kind that leads to change and healing and peace and unity. We forget this sometimes. Jesus did not come to tell people what to do and how to do it. But he came to say, here's what I give you. I give you peace and spirit. I give you loving and heart. For the artful heart, someone has said, is also a peaceful and a positive heart. A content and stable heart. Not that we have to learn something to do by following another rule or listening to wisdom float into our ears. Jesus is simply saying, take the yoke, let me guide you, let me steer you, come to me with your heavy hearts, come to me and turn your stormy and conflicted dispositions into a pool of still waters. He promises that as a song. Uh, God says that the Lord is our shepherd. He talks about leading us beside the still waters into the paths of, uh, or into the green pastures beside the still waters uh, through the valleys where there's lots of danger he's with us the shadows never overcome us god never ever forgets us it may be different god has not forgotten us when we are willing to seek rest for our souls into the welcoming yoke of jesus we will then be ready to enter into a world of unrest and to be at peace within that world. If you give the world not mere criticism and frustration and anger, not 
simply reprimanding everybody for wrong, for being created, and how we do this together with God's power and work of grace. Now, maybe personal with you for a moment. I miss not having things at the bar, picnics, parties, and dinners. I miss not seeing my, my kids and my grandkids. I miss those coming by and sharing a hot dog or a hamburger, eating a meal that may not be cooked the best, but they don't fuss much as we sit down. I miss not setting off my fireworks. See, I used to drive all the way to Ohio. I hate to say this before they were legal in West Virginia. I would go to Ohio and buy a truckload of them and come back and then set them off. Now, I was a little bit sly. I would let somebody else have them off, so if somebody showed up to the rest of they got them and not me, I, I could get out of the way. But, but the point is, I love those things. And now, during this period, on the 4th of July, Cindy and I were like two old, old birds. We sat in the yard in the cool of the evening. Uh, we didn't have family up. We didn't have dinner. We didn't have all those activities. We watched the neighbors' fireworks. They did a good job. I appreciate the job they did. But it was quiet and it was restful. And it could be that I would complain about not having the normal. And I probably do. But also what it is did not necessarily mean complaint to me. It meant peace to me. As I sat and thought about how fortunate we are, even in the midst of trouble, even in the midst of despair and uncertainty, how fortunate we are to have God's peace in us. To be able to, even when things are upside down, to feel God's presence in our lives. So this day, let us be people who seek the yoke of our Jesus, that we will be ready to enter into a world of unrest and be at peace within that world. Not simply fussing about it. We will. We're humans. But accepting what God has given. And let's embrace what God has called us to do. And let us know and never forget, ever forget, that God is in control. And God has not forgotten us. Let's pray. Hear us now, Lord, we pray. Let your spirit guide us in a powerful way this day. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Let us stand together for our affirmation of faith, please, as we respond. Uh, with one another. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and set up on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. This morning in our prayer concerns, we want to remember those who are ill, remember those who have not been able to get out in our own congregation. We want to remember those who are unspoken concerns of people who are sick and under the weather. Please keep them in your prayers this day. We also want to remember that we lost another uh, person in our community this weekend uh, due to COVID. Uh, keep that family in our prayer. Uh, and there are others who are very sick with that, so keep those families in our prayer. Uh, we have people within our own congregation who are family members who are tested positive. We want to keep those folks in prayer also. Uh, be in prayer for those who travel and those who have to be at work in other places. Uh, also good news, we want to remember those who have had New births in their family, those who've had uh, new excitements take place, keep those folks in our prayer also. Are there other special concerns this morning you may like to share? I have a friend named Shirley Hardiman in town. Okay. Friday. Okay. So keep her in your prayers. Uh, Jim's friend Shirley Hardiman who passed away, keep her in our prayers this day, put family in prayer too. Others? We are going to do a responsive prayer today. It is a prayer of intercession. It's printed in the, in the bulletin for you. Uh, if you'll follow along at the appropriate point, I'm going to say here our prayer is a truthfully prayerful response. There will be times when we pray silently for things in our, in our world, too. Let us follow that up, and then we will close with the Lord's prayer. Let us pray, please. 
Let us pray in the Spirit who helps us in our weakness, interceding with signs too deep for words. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Spirit, we pray for the church, many names, for one God. Help us to share the gift you have entrusted to us, the good news of your free gift of life in Christ, like a cup of cold water to a thirsty soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Spirit, we pray for the earth, battered and bruised and fighting, liberate the earth from the dominion of death, and restore it with the blessing of abundant life, so that all generations to come may sing your praise, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the Spirit, we pray for all nations. Remember those who are too often forgotten. The abused, the neglected, the vulnerable, and the weak. Let us let them rejoice in your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. In the spirit, we pray for you, O God, confident that all things work together for good for those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Above all, we give you thanks, O God, that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Help us, O Lord, as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As has been our custom, the offering today will take place in receipts, which means there's a bulletin or an envelope there. You can put it in that envelope if you wish, and somebody will collect it at the end of the service. If you lay offering money on the uh, just lay money on the pew, they'll pick that up also. As I've said before, if the change falls out of your pocket, uh, and it's still there when you leave, you'll probably take that. We also have the sensibility offering that you leave today. I, I, I have that in the newsletter, which comes out later this week, but I forgot to mention this morning. But we will have the sensibility offering, the milk jugs up front. Uh, here, if you go this way and in the back, make sure you socially distance as you go between those two places uh, uh, this day. Uh, let's uh, have our doxology, please. Uh, you may remain seated during that doxology, and then I will lead us in our prayer offering. That is, that is a bad part of that song. It says, I heard the voice of Jesus come unto me and rest. 
Lay down on the weary one. Lay down your head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was, so weary, worn, and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. And the last verse says, I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, your morn shall rise, and all your day be bright. I looked to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun, and in that light my love of life. I'll walk till traveling days are done. I heard the voice of Jesus, and that's all we're about as we go forth as a people of faith. Listen to the word of Jesus. Listen to Julie plays our sin of him today. Thank you. 